Bungu Joshi Haku, which means the Women's Stationery Expo, is the largest retail stationery show in Japan. It was held on the 27th through the 29th of November, and last year's show had over 38,000 people. This is the crowd that's queuing up to go into the show for the first two hour block on the first day. Due to their COVID mitigation procedures, each day had three two hour blocks with 30 minutes in between to sanitize the room. All tickets to the show had to be bought online and you could not get in on the same day. The large warehouse doors that faced to the outside were all open to improve circulation and they brought in a lot of fans for air exchange. They supposedly reduced the number of people allowed by doing the ticketing and the two hour block system. But this is what it looked like inside. Everyone had to wear a mask and use hand sanitizer, but this looked a bit crowded to me. I decided to go ahead and stay because the subway that I rode on was a lot more crowded than this. What I did do was step out for a while until the crowd thinned out. So I wasn't able to get as much film as I would have liked to, but check out last year's show. It's in the same venue and had a lot of the same vendors. I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner. Haibata is a Tokyo paper company that in addition to patterned paper makes different kinds of stationary items like boxes, boxes that will hold business cards, memos, journals, and letters. There is a strong tradition in Japan of making desktop stationary items out of paper. Many times you can see like little drawers and boxes that are made of very sturdy and beautiful patterned paper. This is a matching set of a box, a memo pad, and a kind of fold out cup that'll hold pens or pencils. These are not the thin kind of paper that you would say wrap a present in or something. This box is really sturdy and will hold uh, business cards. The memo pad is different too. It's like this long string of paper with each page separated by perforated lines and then you kind of close it and then pull it off. The cup comes flat and then you kind of pop it open and it's held together with string on the bottom. You pull the bottom part out, I got some ink on it, and then it holds the cup open and the string keeps the bottom from falling out. And then you can pop in some pens. This vendor set up a gachapon. Since I purchased something from Haibata, they let me turn this gachapon made out of paper to get a prize. My prize was this kind of little pin. It says Nobedity there on the side there with a the little red circle. And that means that it's for free. And you don't have to pay for it when you check out. And you get it from the vendor. The, this is the show's logo little file folder for I think like traveler's notebook sized pieces of paper. And the smaller thing is a little compact mirror. I got these for shopping at the show. Elisa and Aka Megane was also here again this year. She makes these beautiful, whimsical, very detailed rubber stamps and she's very popular. As you can see, I can't get to the table. I'm kind of filming from behind her. Aka Megane means red glasses and her logo is a cat wearing red glasses. And all of her stamps have a pair of red glasses printed on the side. Here's the red glasses I have on the two stamps I got. Right next to them was another company that made stamps called Sambi. And I got this hilarious stamp for a friend of mine. Even the packaging is funny. As you can see here it says open so that you can see the rest of the stamp. When you open it you can see that it's a flying saucer. And there's what I think is a cow underneath going help. I'm not sure why it's a cow. Sambi also sold these really cool kind of plywood boxes with little adjustable inserts on the inside where you could put stamps and washi tape in them. 
I was pretty excited about this box because it's roughly the size and shape of a very traditional box that many offices a long time ago in Japan would have to hold all their stamps and honkos, the little han that identified your name or your company. When I lived in Okinawa almost 30 years ago, we used to have to pay our rent in cash. So you'd go to the landlord's office and then you'd pay your rent and they'd give you a receipt and they'd pull out this box here and it had all kinds of stamps in it and they'd stamp it all over the place. I wasn't really sure what they were stamping it for, but your receipts always had all kinds of stamps on it and they kept them in a box much like this. So here's my Han for my name and it fits perfectly in this box. I used to use those complicated acrylic stamps where you could change out the blocks and the different designs, but they were just too much trouble. So now if I just want to use a stamp, I just pull it out, use it with the same color ink, and then just stamp it on a blank piece of paper to get the rest of the ink off and throw it back into the box. And that wood on the inside is kind of made to like absorb any extra ink. The problem with this box though, it's kind of an ugly outside. It's kind of an orangish yellow varnish and it just doesn't look real good. I'm thinking about using my traveler's notebook stickers and sticking them all over the outside of the box and being like one of those cars that have all these bumper stickers all over it. If you have a better idea, please let me know in the comments. And Ubi sold these really cool stationary tote bags. I got one that had nibs on it and different bottles of ink and then little ink splotches. Sakaya Paper was there with their Tamoa River notebooks and journals. I have a bunch of these but they always get you with a new color when they show. This red and blue color Tamoa River journals kind of had their debut at this show and though I have stacks of these notebooks because they're great, I had to get the new blue and red ones. Tsubame Noto was there with their huge catalog of fountain pen friendly journals. They've really expanded their designs and they have things like Mickey Mouse and Peanuts and Moom and Papa. Their journals are sewn and then taped over so if you crank them open they lay flat. I think you can get their plain ones from Jet Pens. This is their boxed ink swatch card collection and you can get it at Shigure Inks. They had an area of mini booze. This one sold washi tape from Taiwan. This one has teapots and teacups on it. There was just so much washi tape at this show. This one sold inks from Taiwan, and this is their bird collection. This is their architecture series. And Tag Stationery had a mini booth, and they brought their ink puddles, and then their ink butterflies, which I will show in my next video, and their mini bottles of ink. And Nagasawa had two mini booths, and they brought their whole contingent of ink. And Mita-san Shodo was also there. I got to give it to Mita-san Shodo. They're at every single pen, ink, and stationery show that I've been at. Their bottles are truly beautiful. They also brought their unusual glass pens filled with colored liquid. I'm going to break for a mid-roll ad, and I'll be back talking about Kami Terrier's newest cool paper. Kami Terrier is another one of these companies that seems to be at all the shows and they brought some really interesting stuff. A lot of their stuff kind of falls into the kawaii section or cute section. This is called Ink Tag. At Ink Numa a few months back, Kami Terrier sold these kind of ink swatch cards on a ring so you could kind of keep them together. These ink tags are kind of a smaller version of that. You can see the size comparison to my hand. One of the ways you can use it is to unsnap the ring and separate out a card and then run a thin rubber band through it or some sort of string. 
and then you can color it in with the ink or label it and then put it around your bottle of ink. An alternative is to use double sided tape and then stick that little card on top of your ink box and it can label your ink box and you can see a swatch there. Here's a J or Bond bottle with a tag and a bunch of small Ido Shizuku bottles with tags. And here's their sample of just using them as mini ink swatch cards on a ring. They also had these business size cards called ink cards. They came with a design of either an ink bottle or a fountain pen and they're business size so that you can fill them out and then stick them in those little business card holders if you want to. When you open them up, they have a little piece of blotting paper that slide into these little triangle corners. They have a design and then a place where you could write about the ink. And you can peel those little cards off or you can just flip them and leave them in that little container. So you can peel them off and stick them in like a business card holder or something. And it feels like the same kind of paper on those flip cards. It's really sturdy and very smooth and fountain pen friendly. And they updated and had some new Noki or Nochi uh, notebooks. These are their very slender, thin notebooks. They started out about a year ago with their ink Nochi, which is like a little ink journal. This one is a hardcover and you can replace the inside little notebook. It comes complete with a band that can either hold your page open or keep the book closed. And this one comes with a stiff cover and it's not replaceable and it's a little bit thinner. The reason why these are so skinny and long and thin is so that you can put it in a pencil case. This is called a Fusen no Gomibako, which literally means a little sticky note rubbish bin. You get three Gomibakos in this package. The Gomibako is made of kind of a vinyl-like paper and then has an insert with a couple little stickies on the inside. You can pull off and use the sticky as in any other kind of post-it note thing. And when you're pulling off the stickies, you can stick it into the little sleeve there if there's no place to throw it away. You can carry this in your pencil case, but it also has a thing on the back where you can peel it off and actually stick it in the notebook or book that you're using it for. So then you can just pull it up, use the sticky, or use the garbage can part of it. You can also put your own stickies in there. I have these little otter sticky things and I'll just go ahead and pull a bunch of them out. And then stick it on the outside of that sleeve and then I can carry my own stickies with me. And the gomi bako can come off your notebook but then you won't be able to use it like in your, in your pencil case because it's kind of tacky on the back. What I found to be the most fun is their mini five size refill papers. I don't have the mini five size notebook, but the sales guy told me that you could get it at any stationery store. This paper is called Ten Tai and is made to look like different sections of the night sky. And it's kind of held together on the top like a pad. So if you don't have a notebook, it all stays together. It's a vellum kind of paper and is fountain pen friendly. It looks really nice when you use a fountain pen on it. You can see the writing on the back side, but that's mainly because it's a kind of transparent paper. This one is called Refill Pad for Fountain Pen, and it's like their Paper Treasure Paper Sampler Pad. It has 10 pages of OK Fool's Cap, and then a black piece of paper, and then 10 pages of um, bank paper, and then 10 pages of Tomoa River, and 10 pages of Speakabond, and finally 10 pages of something called Istori COC. And it does act like a pad from the side so you don't have random pieces of paper flying all over the place if you don't have a notebook. 
And this last one is called Refill Pad Neko or Cat. And it's basically their sheer vellum paper with cat design on it. I've shown it on larger pieces of paper. And it's a fun fountain pen friendly paper. At Ray May's booth, they had these pencil cases that would pop up and stay open like a clamshell kind of case. They're soft sided and then they have a little net on the top you can put odds and ends. And then you have like a divider that's connected on with Velcro, like a camera bag or something. And then you can kind of adjust the divider. I think Jet Pens sells the older model of this without the divider in it. So I would expect that they would probably get this one too. My main problem is keeping all my pens corralled on my desk, mainly because I have so many inked up for ink reviews. So having just this little flat thing that I can just dump pens in is really handy. TS makes my favorite shtajiki or writing mat. They brought the Otona no Shtajiki again this year. There are some Shtajikis that are really soft. They're made for like being a cushion for writing. You can kind of bend them and roll them up. Some are hard plastic like that one. But this Otona no Shtajiki is kind of like right in the middle between these two kinds. Kokuyo had a huge booth in the middle of the show. And they brought all kinds of stuff. These green hardcover sketchbooks seem to be getting very popular now, so they brought several kinds with different designs. An interesting thing was this little machine that you stuck your washi tape on in the big rolls, and then you could kind of spool them out into a smaller roll. They were all sold out of this. And then they had their washi tape roll tape cutters, but they came in some interesting designs. You put the clip on the washi tape, peel it back, and then cut it off. And they're little stick scissors. These pochi stick scissors, you just push up on the button, and the blades come out, and then the button turns into like a little clipper. They're handy because they can go into slender pencil cases. The next thing might be useful for someone into mechanical drawing or drafting. It's a set of five mechanical pencils that come in different widths, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1.3. It comes in a little box along with an eraser. It's called Enpitsu Shapu. And Enpitsu Shapu in Japanese is just the word for mechanical pencil. It comes in this kind of sleek, black, lightweight tin. Since it's Japanese, you need to remember to open the box from the left to the right. Inside are instructions to relead the pencils. If for some reason in your sketching or drawing you need different widths of pencils, this is quite handy. They are lightweight and easy to get out of the case. There's a little side hole there to be able to pull out pencils. And also on the bottom, you can kind of push down on the tip and get the pencils out really easy. This whole bunch of double-sided tape rollers was put together to make it kind of look like a giant Christmas candy or Christmas candy cane. I got this big old long stack because I only wanted to get one of them. It was this one right here with the UFO. It's for the same friend that I got the UFO stamp for. I like these because they're colored and you can see them easier and they have a cool design. This one has glasses and mustaches. And we'll fold this paper over and yep, it sticks pretty good. That was all Kokio stuff. As a side note, whenever you have a long line, they usually assign a salesperson to hold the sign up. It literally means tail end of the line, so you know where to go to line up. Surprisingly, Canon, the camera company, had a large booth. Here they're selling a little Hello Kitty printer. 
These mini printers are now all the rage for scrapbooking or journaling. You can transfer your pictures off of your phone onto them. They had some funky small cameras. Their selfies, which is another small printer for pictures. They also had full-size printers for pictures. And this printer is used to easily make Japanese New Year's Day postcards called Nengajo. Paraglass was the only full-up glass pen maker that came to the show. There were a couple stationary booths that had a few glass pens, but he was the only full-up glass blower there. His booth was surprisingly busy considering that this was a stationary show. He also had this really cool video on an iPad of him making the pens. Plus Lab had these cute little bags that had a stationary design on them. They also used them for their lucky bags. You don't know what's inside the bag, but it's worth more than what you paid for it. It has a cool design. Here's a rocker blotter, a thing of ink, a fountain pen. There's a tag around the handles so that you don't know what's inside the bag. So let's open it. Looks like it's some sort of paper. It's stationary. Some sort of a stationary design on the back of the letter paper. And on the flip side, it looks like it's the envelope with the same stationary pattern. And then the other side of the letter paper is like a little fountain pen. And it looks like there's some sticky notes here. One has kind of a stationary pattern, it looks like. And then the other one has a fountain pen in the corner. And there are two charm cards. I think you can use it as a bookmark. One has a bottle of ink and a splotch, and the other glasses and a book. In the bottom of the bag is a thing called a clear bottle. It's a small plastic water bottle with stationary items on it. There's a rocker blotter, a bottle of ink, a pen and other stationary items on this. Put everything back in the bag and then I'll add the shtajiki or the writing mat. I'll add a small Tomoa River notebook. I'll add an ink tag and the ink cards. The stick scissors and the washi tape cutter. The washi tape. Two stamps. The unicorn tape roller with hearts and the popcorn one with stars. Noki notebook and then finally the file folder and mirror. I think it's pretty stuffed now. So that's the giveaway. The stationary bag with 20 items all stuffed in it. You just need to like and subscribe and put in a comment that has the word stationary in it. That's all you need to do to be entered into this giveaway. You can more than double your chance of winning if you post this video someplace and then send me the link to the email that's on my about page. If you do post it on a public forum, please make sure somebody else hasn't posted it. I don't want to be out there spamming everything. And it can be on any kind of platform you want. And as per all the different rules, this isn't sponsored by YouTube or anybody else but me. And I'll announce the winner in the next video. Good luck and I hope you're enjoying your holidays.